Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. To prepare for this holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us call to mind our sins as we ask the Lord for his pardon and his peace. Forgive us for the times we have sinned. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Open our hearts to receive your grace so that we can fly like eagles under the wind, your wind beneath our wings. Uh, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We pray for peace in the world, peace in our nation, peace in our souls. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Six little ones here. I think you're, yeah, under the age of ten. Who's the oldest? Do you mind if I walk over here for a little bit and ask you? <laughs> so, what are your ages? Twelve. Twelve. Who's that? Five. Six. Five, six. Okay. All right. So, you know, I'm speaking, speaking to everybody, but I'm gonna, you're going to help me with this homily just for a few minutes, okay? They seem, they seem, most of them feel pretty good. <laughs> so, well, thanks for coming out. Um, the prophet Zechariah, that was the first reading. We had three readings with the gospel. So, prophet Zechariah, that was the first reading. He lived, you know how many years he lived before Jesus came into the world? How many years do you think he lived? Anybody? Take a guess. 20. 20 years? Go back even further. Nice guess. 5, 10, 500. 500 years before Jesus. Wow. And yet, and yet, he wrote something down that described what would happen when Jesus, riding into Jerusalem, we celebrate that on Palm Sunday. Remember Palm Sunday? We have the thing. So, um, so 500 years is a long time. I'm 69 years old. Do you think that's old? Yes, sir. <laughs> no, okay. Well, they're going like this. Um, it's okay. We'll say yes. 
Um, we have a school here, as you know, and I remember going into the second or third grade class, and I told them, I'm 68 years old. Wow. I said, you think that's old? Yeah. I said, yeah, it is. Okay, so, so there we are. All right, so you, I'm 69, add 400 and something more years to that, and that's where the prophet Zechariah lived before Jesus. Thank you for helping me out with this timeline, okay? And so the prophet writes this, okay? He says, Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you, a just savior, as is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the fowl of an ass. It means a small, small donkey, very small. He shall banish the horse and warrior's bow. These things used for war, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. A couple of things, like the Bible study here. When you hear the name Zion, are you moved emotionally, or you go, what is that name again? What does that mean? What do we think when we hear the name Zion? Well, here's some Bible study information. It's used almost interchangeably with the city of Jerusalem. Now, why is that? Well, Zion is a specific historically important location. The name refers to both the hill and the city of Jerusalem. Did you know that? The hill of Jerusalem is called Zion. But it also refers to Jerusalem itself as it becomes transformed into the kingdom of heaven. The promise of Jesus came through this area in the world, on this planet, and focusing on Jerusalem, when we call Jerusalem Zion, we're talking of the expectations that God has for that city to become holy. Just like God has expectations for us, he gives us another name, although we may not be there yet, and that name is Saint. Are you holy? Do you feel holy? Why not? Okay, so the inhabitants of Jerusalem are personified. They're referred to as the daughters of Zion. Okay? In a way similar to how you and I, as part of the body of Christ, the church, the church is referred to as the bride of Christ. Okay? So Jesus loved us so much. He loved us so much and was so engaged in doing the Father's will in order to give us all that we need to collaborate with His grace. That's why he invented summer vacation for little kids to take a break from school. You think that's true? You do? Okay. All right, well, that's a good thing. Trust me this year. Your teachers are also enjoying this vacation, too. All right, so, all right, Jesus, his grace, helps us to, to put to death our sinful inclinations so that we can joyfully and courageously live in the Spirit. We receive this Holy Spirit in the sacrament of baptism. We are renewed with it and strengthened with it in the sacrament of confirmation. And Jesus spiritually nourishes us in Holy Communion, His body, blood, soul, and divinity. Have you ever considered lately how Jesus humbled Himself to leave the heavenly courts of heaven as the eternal Word of God, to be born of the Virgin Mary, where through her He took on flesh in order to have a body that would speak truth, a body that would perform miracles, a body that would be insulted, persecuted, tortured, crucified, and then resurrected from the dead, all for the sake of our salvation. Quite a job description. Would you take this on yourself for somebody else? He took it on, and he's God. That's humility. We get enraged if somebody sees this as a cross word to us. Do we not think that in order to do this for us, Jesus would have to have the greatest humility ever imagined and the greatest unconditional love ever demonstrated? To do that, that is, that is the example. Unconditional love and humility. On the way to Calvary, and even to, up to that point, he was insulted. He was humiliated. He was all these things, but yet he stayed on the course because he loved his Father wanted him to love us to himself. Two readings uh, for, uh, for this 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time uh, sent out a two-fold message. Today's readings, right? Today's readings, one is for us to wake up to the reality that God's love for us is great. 
This love for us is revealed by His only Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, made possible by the virtue of His humility. That's one message to take home. The second one is a warning. If you live according to the flesh, St. Paul wrote, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Isn't it enough? Isn't there enough death and violence around us to have us take heed to the importance of being obedient to not just some, but to all of God's commandments? In Jesus lays our hope. No matter what cross of suffering we endure in this life and in these times, if the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, we're told, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to our mortal bodies, also to the spirit that dwells in us. This is the good news of the gospel. It means that we have a future, not only in this world, but in eternal life. This is the good news of the gospel, that you and I as Christians can rejoice in. This is the hope that every grieving widow, every grieving widower, any orphan without parents, or anybody who lost their best friend, or anybody, like anything, can be consoled because we know that in Jesus Christ, who lived, died, and rose from the dead, our separation from our loved ones is temporary. Life is eternal. Love is immortal. Death is only the horizon. All the more reason to give us to praise the Lord's name forever, my Lord and my God. So say this with me. I will praise your name forever, my Lord and my God. Say that. I will praise your name forever, my Lord and my God. Say it again. You'll now think about it even more. I will praise your name forever, my Lord and my God. Do you feel it? Do you have enough reason to praise the Lord? Yeah, things may be going wrong in different ways of life, but hey, let's praise the Lord anyway. Hey, he's here for us, all right? Catholics were minimalists might have heartily mumble the words that mass responsorial psalm, or they fall asleep, or they were too tired, or trying to pay attention, you know, all that. I will praise you, Lord, forever, as long as this mass doesn't last more than one hour. <laughs> right? If we are this kind of a Catholic, and even if we are not, there is no end to the height and depth of God's love for us that is waiting for us to explore and be obedient to God's commandments for ourselves and for others. The doorway to enter this joy is the virtue of humility. To imitate Christ, which is our life's work as Christians, is to be a man, a woman, a little boy, a little girl, see them there, okay? All ages, we must have humility. Jesus in today's gospel describes himself as meek and humble and gives praise to God, his Father, who reveals truth to the little ones. So, he's referring to the little ones I just walked up to, okay? But you and I, in the face of God who is grand, can also be like little ones. God, Papa, Daddy, Abba, Father, pick me up, I've fallen, I've scraped my knee, I've fallen into sin, I'm a mess, I've fallen into big sin, I'm really big in trouble now. You're humble enough, like little children, to ask the Lord, pick me up, Daddy, heal my wounds. If we have pride, we're not going to do it that way. Many people in the world today are so filled with pride, pride in themselves and in their sins, to where truth becomes hidden from them. The wise and learned in their own estimation, think, I'm smart, I don't need to hear these things, I don't need to go to church, I'm a good person, okay? I know this, I know that. Well, if that's the case, and they're educated beyond their intelligence, often with science, inebriated with, with the things of today that are able to happen, things that the demonic lives of Satan are really having a ball today. Satan tells many people, have pride, in the fact that you can choose another gender, other than the one you received from God, who, by the way, does not exist. 
have pride in a lifestyle that breaks the restrictive commandments of God, which are being replaced today with legal and progressive ideologies. Go ahead, have fun. Lies, lies, lies. Pride, we even have a month called Pride Month. And what is that month celebrating? Celebrating sin. Jesus, in his humble, in his humility, died for all of us. Saints in the making. You and I are saints in the making. And for hardened sinners who are at the moment are blinded to where truth seems to be hidden from them, well, he died for them too. Maybe we at one time were hard, hardened sinner. And you and I, as sinners, striving imperfectly to be humble in Christ's life, never forget that in Christ, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. There is always hope. The doorway to Christ in this future is humility. Jesus' invitation is given to sinners yet to crash in their own blindness, but it's also given to believers who are filled with pride. Oh, I'm so holy and glad I'm not like that person. Well, pride reigns everywhere. You must be humble. We say, a great prayer, Lord, let me see my heart and my life as you see it, not as I perceive it to be. Just strip away all my misconceptions and let's see the movie of my life now. I don't want to wait till the judgment when you show me this. It's too late then. I want to know it now so I can make some changes. And Jesus says, don't be afraid to do this. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. You will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke, which means for my teachings, are easy and my burden light. So we can say today, Rejoice, O daughter Zion. Rejoice, O daughter Jerusalem. Rejoice, all of us here, saints in the making, at this mass. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Jesus is the King of Kings. He is humble enough to take residence in our hearts. Open the door and let him in. And have him proclaim peace to our souls. And then have us proclaim peace to the nations. Please stand now for the confession of faith. Father reveals the mysteries of the kingdom to little ones. Let us pray to our God, who shows such love for small and simple folk. For the church in her work of charity for the poor and the overburdened, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our God. For leaders who will listen even to the humblest citizens, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our God. For people who have shut God out of their lives, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children who discover God in our community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been called through death to eternal rest, especially Deacon Don Creed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for uh, men called to the priesthood and for women called to religious life. We pray for those who train and serve in our armed forces and for our first responders, for their safety and the safety of those they are called to serve and protect. We pray to the Lord. Lord, for the safety of children throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for our intentions offer the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord of heaven and of earth, gather in obedience to your son's command, your, to your son's command, your people ask you to accept their prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed to you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and working in the hands, we will become for us the bread of life. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we received the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands we become our spiritual drink. Wash you, O Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May this oblation, dedicated to your name, purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, and send down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed was called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you, Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Glad to announce that the movie The Sound of Freedom is the number one grossing movie in the country, actually. And the, uh, on the 4th of July weekend, that's quite an accomplishment for a movie that's giving a very strong message <clears throat> and very well done at that as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that is a top grossing picture that was not backed by the big moguls of Hollywood and still shows that people want to hear truth and are tired of hearing woke messages from Disney and other, other pictures. In spite of that, regardless of all those things, it's a very well done movie. Um, as The Sound of Freedom deals with uh, Tim Ballard, who was working for um, the government to bust tra uh, trafficking and kidnapping of children. And not only did he um, uh, succeed in doing that, he decided to also go to the countries around the world to rescue the actual children where they were kidnapped and do sting operations to those who, who did it. And so he did this for many years. This is his story, it's powerful, and it's ongoing in, this, in the world today. Um, we must pray for our own nation because we are, if we're not the number one nation that is in, got engaged in using children in this awful way, buying these things, uh, we're up there with it. That's not good. So we must repent and pray uh, that our Blessed Mother uh, intercedes for us. She is the patroness of the Americas and ask her to intercede for us. It's Jesus who will save us, Jesus who will hear these prayers. Um, also, want to announce that um, Alta Society will be collecting items for babies and toddlers from uh, July 8th to the 23rd for the Alpha Center. And there's more information in your bulletin, so please read that. Now, you may remember Sister Irene from the Philippines. Um, she has visited this church once a year. She wears a pink habit. She's about this size. I've known her for about almost 20 years now. I call her, you're a walking Pepto-Bismol bottle. And she takes all of that, and I say, you're also a ninja warrior, because what she does is very much similar, in some ways, to Tim Ballard, who this movie Sound of Freedom is about. Her nuns, Mary Queen of Heaven missionaries, they go into the bars and the night spots in the Philippines, and they can spot young girls who are against their will or actually wanting to go into prostitution and other things that are not good, and they encourage them to say, there's another way. Don't follow this path. We'll help you. We'll put you up. We'll get you out of here. That takes courage, because guess who doesn't like that? Business people that are putting these girls up for these things. So Sister Irene's a hero, but she's not going to be with us next weekend. She's supposed to visit us next weekend, but wasn't able to make the trip. But we will still be taking up a collection uh, to support this effort to save young women from this life of horribleness. Um, there's information in the bulletin about the work that Sister Irene does, so please read and give if you can next week to support this. Uh, checks can be made to St. John's for this second collection. There will be a separate basket for this collection, and the money we collect will be sent to Sister Irene. And I thank you for your generosity to her in the past. Okay. Please stand now. If I give you the final blessing, we'll pray the prayer for protection during hurricane season. God, our Father, Creator of the universe and Lord of all creation, we humbly stand before you as your children in thanksgiving for your loving care and protection. We ask that you keep us safe from all hurricanes, which may threaten us in the coming seasons. Protect us from all fear and anxiety of storms and give us an ardent trust and hope in your love and mercy. You alone have the power to command the sea, the wind, and the rain. You alone bring peace, calm, and safety. Father, we thank you in advance, for you are our only refuge. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks to God. Let us join one another in singing.